All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started with Coach Maneri. You guys can ask, begin asking him questions. I don't see any, no one's typed in an indication for a question yet. So uh, we'll just go ahead and start with whoever has a question first. And uh, from there, if you just indicate if you have a question, we'll follow that order in, in the chat box. So questions for Coach Maneri. Okay, Wilson. Hey, Paul, how are you today? Good, Wilson, how are you? Okay. Um, I guess for starters, this game tomorrow against ULM, um, are y'all gonna go with Will? And if so, what do you hope to see from him having not pitched in about two weeks? Although, of course, he would have last week without the ring out. Yeah, of course. Um, uh, we're gonna uh, start Will, and um, he's probably just gonna go a couple of innings. We're gonna absolutely going to have to have him available for this weekend. It's a short week and uh, definitely want to have him available for Saturday. But most importantly, we need to look at a lot of guys tomorrow, especially young kids that have not pitched. We're hoping that Zach Murray will make his collegiate debut tomorrow. He's, uh, he's been out the whole year with injury and we think he's ready to go. So hopefully he's going to give us a little bit of a spark. Um, we need to get Javen Coleman back out on the mound. I really like the way Theo Millis has thrown the last couple of times. We need to get him out there. Uh, I, I like the way Michael Fowler has thrown. He didn't get to throw this weekend, but he's thrown well the last couple of times as well. So, you know, it's definitely time for us to, to run some of these freshman arms out there and see if they can, can give us a good spark. Uh, you know, out of the bullpen for us. So th this is going to be an important game for us to to see what we've got in that bullpen. It's time to to use some of these young arms and see if they can provide something for us. What sort of injury did uh, Zachary Murray have? Uh, Zach had what they call a Bennett's lesion in his shoulder. It's a uh, commonly referred to as a bone spur. So they had to cut that out and. Um, He's actually made a pretty quick recovery as those go. And uh, he's, he's ahead of schedule. And he's been throwing some sim games, simulation games against hitters for the last few weeks. And uh, we think he's ready to go. And hopefully it'll, it'll be successful. I mean, I don't expect him to be where he was before he had this, this thing crop up. But uh, he didn't pitch at all in the fall. And... Um, you know, this will be the first time that he's pitched in a real game. I'll be happy if he just throws the ball over the plate and, you know, shows some poise out there. Doing an interview right now. You said uh, we'll, you know, try to have him available again for Saturday. Do you envision that? possibly being in a starting role, or is that again going to be evaluated come after the first two games? Possibly. It'll be evaluated after the first two games. But, you know, we have the Grambling game next Tuesday, but Will will not be available for that game because he has an economics final next Tuesday. <laughs> so we know he will not be available for the midweek game next week, so there will be no hesitation to use him on Saturday of next of this coming uh, week. He'll, he'll hopefully throw two innings possibly three, depending on his pitch count, but I definitely got to have him available and use him on this Saturday, whether or not it'll be as a starter or out of the bullpen, I'm not sure, but pretty good chance he'll be pitching on Saturday. We won't need to save him for a midweek performance next week. Hey coach, yeah, I'm not sure if you've already talked about this or not, but just kind of the, the general feeling around the team, you know, after kind of a, a, a rough, rough Saturday, obviously, for you guys. I mean, when you have the, the lead there going into the seventh and not able to you know, cap it off, and then obviously the way that the series ended, I mean, just, I guess, kind of where is the, the mindset of this team, um, you know, as you guys really need to start scraping together some of some wins here to, to get yourselves back into this? Well, to be honest, I couldn't answer that question, Glenn. I haven't seen the guys since I said goodbye to them on Saturday. We'll, we'll start practice here shortly, and we'll get together and all. 
obviously have a lot of interaction with them at that point. But as you might imagine, you know, they uh, when they left on Saturday, they they were they were pretty down, and you know, we just had talked to them for a little while. But um, you know, we were a hair away from winning a series against a top ranked team and played so well, really, for two ball games. Um, we just couldn't close it out. You know, the, the, that first game on Saturday, you know, we did everything right for almost two full games, played about as well as we could play. Had a great victory on, um, on Thursday night. And we're two outs away from a great victory on game one and on Saturday and would have had a, a super series win and just couldn't get the last two outs. Um, you know, it's, it's the way baseball can be so cruel sometimes. You know, we think about how good we'd be feeling right now if we just got those last two outs, but it didn't happen. And, um, and then, of course, you know, without, you know, having an established third starter, things got off to a rocky start for us in the final game and, and just got worse from there. So, you know, it ended up being a, a, a pretty lousy day for us and, you know, so we got to regroup, you know, get ready for a ball game tomorrow, get back on, uh, get back on, on the uh, horse and hopefully have a good game tomorrow and, and then take on another, you know, really tough opponent this weekend on the road. I know that, that uh, Garrett Edwards went, I think, probably his career high, I think, on Saturday. I mean, did you like what you saw from him? I know that you mentioned that Will, you know, was going to be jockeying for that Saturday spot as role as well, that third starter spot. But do you see Garrett also making that kind of a strong push based off of what he did on Saturday? Yeah, certainly. And, but in all honesty, my, the least of my concerns right now is the third starter role. The bigger concern is being able to close out a game that we have a chance to win. And that, that's been my biggest concern all year. It started, you, I mean, you guys have been watching the games. It started in the non-conference games. You know, being able to, to close out a game has been the biggest concern. You know, I mean, if, if you go back even in the several years that I've been the coach here, you know, I've always said that the, the, closing, the ability to close out a game, the closer's role is more important than the third starter. You know, you got two starters and you got to and you got to have somebody that can what good does it do to pitch six, seven good innings and not be able to finish a game? You know, I'd rather have somebody that can do that than worry about the third starter. You can always try to piece together a third game if you had to with everybody that remains. But to have three starters go out there and pitch six, seven good innings and then not be able to finish the game doesn't do you any good. That's why the games are nine innings or in this case, seven innings. And we just have struggled to finish games, you know, this whole year, you know, in the, even in the non-conference games, we, we gave up leads, but we were able to come back and walk off some teams and, you know, but it's all, it's been a concern all year. And, um, you know, we've closed some games off and, you know, excited, we've made it exciting, but we've closed them off. They haven't been easy. Um, but obviously this, you know, the one at Tennessee, one strike away, and this one against South Carolina were the ones that hurt the most. I mean, you, you take those two games that were right there in the palm of your hand and you turn those two losses into wins. Not that being six and nine is anything to write home about, but it sounds a lot better than four and 11, of course. So I'm not, I'm not overly worried right now about the third starter. You know, Jaden Hill went down, you know, Maybe we should have had him in the bullpen all along. You know, I don't know. We I, we just, you know, right now I just, we get a, in a position to win a game at the end. My biggest concern is just being able to get the last outs. That's, that's the most frustrating thing. You know, your kids play so, so well and so hard for the entire game. Your starting pitcher pitch is great. The kids are playing magnificent and then, you know, we just got to get the last outs of the game. Not, not, not pointing the finger at any one person. We just, whatever the combination, whatever, whoever can do it for us, we just got to have somebody that can, can do it, you know? And I'm not sure, you know, who that person has to be, whether it's a young kid, whether it's a veteran, but it's just, it just, 
gets very demoralizing when you're when your team plays so well for the entire game and you you have a chance to win and, and we don't you know we, we, we can't finish the game we've tried different guys some guys have done it sometimes and not done it others and that's that's what's a little bit frustrating you know how is uh, how has Matthew Beck progress? I think we asked you about him a couple of weeks ago, maybe, but I was just just curious if you guys expect him back anytime soon. He's actually going to throw his first bullpen session today, so we're going to be real anxious to see how that goes. It's been a oh. big that's been a big uh, void in our bullpen for us all year. You know, very underrated void that not many people have talked about. But I'm sorry, Mike. Uh, nothing. Good afternoon. I was just curious, um, your thoughts on Helmers and, and why didn't he get any playing time this weekend? Um, well, you know, uh, Will has done some really good things for us. Um, you know, my concerns with Will, you know, when he's pitched in the SEC games, you know, he's had a difficult time finishing innings. I don't know if you've noticed that, but he's pitched real well in the midweek. But when we pitched him on the weekend, you know, he's had a difficult time making it through an entire inning. His second secondary pitches are still a very much a work in progress. And, um, you know, he's, a, he's been a really valuable guy for us, especially in the midweek. You know, he's, you know, he's a strike thrower and he throws, you know, he throws just hard enough and, you know, his command is good. And, you know, he, he mixes in, you know, a nice change up, but he doesn't really have a great, great break and ball or, you know, great secondary pitches. And in the SEC, those kind of guys have a tough time. And we tried to use him in the SEC games, but he's had a tough time. I think most of the time he's, he's had trouble getting through a full inning. So, you know, you, you know, I felt that some of the other guys we've had have had a little bit better chance. And, and then if you, if you use him and he ends up throwing a bunch of pitches and doesn't have much success, now you've burned him up and don't have him available in the middle of the week when he can, you know, help you win that game. So not that those games are more important than the weekend game, but, you know, you just, you're making a decision on when he can help you the most. So that's why basically we're doing that. But, you know, this week, this weekend, we're going to have to try to use, and we got to have all hands on deck and hopefully, you know, he'll get back into a groove pitching tomorrow a little bit. And then we're going to have to have him available on Saturday might as well, because he's not going to be able to pitch in the middle of the week next week because of his final exam on Saturday, on a Tuesday, excuse me. You had mentioned maybe the combination of pitchers, uh, especially closeout games. Do you feel like that can be an advantage given the fact that, you know, you kind of keep them off guard or guessing a little bit because different styles. For using him at the end of the game, not necessarily Helmers in general, but you know, to me, like uh, Edwards fought no combination, like it was set up and closed. Kind of, kind well, you know, of we we've tried, you know, the, the the three guys that we've tried to, you know, to use at the end that we felt most confident in have been Fontenot, Floyd, and Edwards. And if you look at all three of them, they've done some really good things, but they've also had their their disappointments as well. You know, Floyd is. You know, he's gone in there in the eighth inning at Tennessee and he struck out the side, but then in the ninth inning, you know, he's one strike away and he gives up the game tying hit. You know, uh, Garrett, you know, comes in against Kentucky and top of the order, one, two, three, to save the game against Kentucky. Looked great. But he also has had a couple of games where, you know, he gave up the walk off hit or the run to allow the game to be tied. And obviously, Devin, you know, he, last weekend against Kentucky was phenomenal, you know, but then the other day, you know, he, he couldn't couldn't close out the game. So, you know, there's just, you know, there nobody's been perfect. You know, I mean, you're just not sure sure exactly what you're going to get out of any of them. So it's it's. Um, you know, I know they're all doing the best they can and they they've done some really good things for us. It's just, you're just not 100% sure what you're going to get with each guy. And they're, they're doing the, like I said, they're all doing the best that they can. And I love them all. They, they, they're, you know, they compete just as hard as, as they can. And, um, you know, two of them are freshmen. One of them, you know, has a little more experience than the other. And, and he's been through, through the battles for you. He, he did a super job for us, you know, on, on Thursday night and then on Saturday, it just didn't work out. So, 
you know, you take the good with the bad, but, you know, when it doesn't work out, it, you know, it's obviously disappointing and nobody feels worse than the kid. So. Paul, well, sort of, well, sort a, of a, unrelated to bullpen. Um, the Wally Pontiff game, y'all obviously weren't able to play that this year. Was that just because of the coronavirus pandemic and do y'all plan to get it back next year? It's obviously sort of been thrown around in its sight the last couple of seasons. You know what, Wilson, that, that, the topic never even came up among our administration, to be honest with you. I, I don't, I couldn't even answer the question for you. You know, we, we weren't even sure we, what we were going to have for fans for the games, you know, it, I mean, coming out of, out of the pandemic, obviously last year it had to be canceled this year. We started out with 25% capacity. I, I think we're at 50% capacity now. I think with the pandemic and the protocols and everything else, I think it, I never even really discussed it with the administration. I think they're just happy to to have some fans and we still have a bunch of seats that are zip tied together. And I think everything's just been kind of put on the back burner. And we're just happy to, to get through the season with some fans in the stands. So, you know, I don't think we've even talked about it for next year, in all honesty. Not that it's not important to us, but I think it's just been put on the back burner for right now. Does it help that you're, like you said, you're, you're, you're this close, you know, I mean, obviously it's not just talk. You can, you can tell the guys, look, we're right here. You know, we just gotta make a pitch, make a hit, or, or is that kind of a familiar refrain that just that sung so long, so often? You know, Michael, I, I've taught, I hate talking about losing, you know, and you know, this is not the LSU way to talk about losing. There's no such thing as moral victories, you know, we're here to win and, that's what we've done for years and it's what we're supposed to do. Um, but I've also, you know, get, getting beat it was the score of the final game, nine to nothing. That That's distasteful, you know, when you're not even competitive in the game is awful. You know, when you, when you get beat, when you're winning two to nothing and they score four runs in the last inning, those games cause you to toss and turn all night because you say, should I have left Labus in? Should I have you know, done this, should I have done that? You know, you second guess all every decision that you make. Um, you know, we've lost, I don't know how many games it is by one run or two runs in the league this year. It's been like four or five, I guess, you know, and, and, you, and you know that if those games had been, even if you just took, like I said, the two games where we one strike away or two outs away and we had the leads, you know, even if you just turn those two games around, you're, you know, you feel like, you know, you're right in the middle of the pack at least, you know, I mean, you're, you're just, you know, it's just so frustrating to think that you're so close. I, I think our team has really gotten better. I think we've, we've made a lot of improvements in a lot of areas with a, with a really young team. I mean, we went into the season with most guys never having seen SEC game action. And now when you look at it, we, we've lost a, you know, our big star or stud prospect out of our weekend rotation. And yet we've had two phenomenal starting pitchers that have been consistent as can be. And I feel like we're, we're just so close and, and yet just still snake bitten. I've, I've been concerned, you know, all year about our bullpen and, you know, a lot of people have, that have watched our team have been concerned about our bullpen. And, you know, I'm not laying the blame on any one aspect of our team. We have other areas of our team that need to be shored up as well. You know, um, certainly don't have a perfect team, but we have areas that are really good. I mean, we have some players, young players that are, I think, going to be really superstars in the SEC. And, I'm excited about that. And they're getting better. They're getting better before our very eyes. So you feel like you're getting really close, but you feel like you're taking one step forward and then two steps back, you know, and that's, that's frustrating. LSU is about winning. And when you don't win, it's hard to take solace in anything, you know, we're supposed to win. And I'm the one that's responsible for that. So not, I, I can't be proud about it, anything at this point. Hey, Coach, um, I think you addressed it a little bit on Saturday. Um, 
Thursday, for example, you hit, you scored when you needed to score, got insurance runs, so forth. Saturday, a 2 nothing lead just kind of was a 2 nothing lead the whole way until the end. Um, can you speak to trying to, uh, you know, score more, separate the score a little bit more, capitalize on your opportunities offensively? Well, you know, I mean, I've been around a lot of years, Jacques, and I've, I've, I know what it takes, you know, and, you know, we had, we had opportunities to extend that two to nothing lead, not a lot of opportunities, you know, we're up against a great pitching staff this past weekend, a lot of really hard throwers, but, you know, you have an opportunity, it's, it's two nothing, you got a chance to tack on that third run, you know, and, and, you know, the lay fan doesn't recognize necessarily why I'm mad at myself. You know, we got first and third, got Trey Morgan up. Trey has been as clutch a hitter as we've had all year. And Trey hits a lot of balls to the opposite field. And um, I mean, he's a, he's, he's a walking sacrifice fly waiting to happen there. He's going to drive in this run for us. Okay. But you know, the wind's blowing in from left field. And, and, and I recognize that, and the count's 2-0, and oh, and I should put on a hit-and-run play. In my heart, I know I should put on a hit-and-run play and, and yell out to Trey and really encourage him to try to get on top of the pitch and just hit a ground ball in the infield. And by starting the runner, I can stay out of the double play and have the runner go on contact from third base, and then that gets us the third run, you see but I hesitate because the pitcher is just a little bit wild and he's been wild up in the zone. And I'm thinking if, if he throws a pitch neck high, Trey can't get on top of that pitch because it's going to be 94 miles an hour. If you've ever tried to get on top of a 94 mile an hour pitch, it's impossible. So I hesitate. I don't, I don't put on the hit and run play. Trey swings at the pitch what probably normally would have been at least a medium depth fly ball, which would have given Nolan Kane a chance to send the runner from third base. The wind blows it back in and it's just a fly ball into short left field where the shortstop can catch the ball and we, and we, we can't send them. So you see what I'm saying? I, I yeah. take the blame for that. And so I'm mad at myself for not having the guts to put on a, a hit and run play there. If we add that third run right there, then maybe we go up three, nothing. And maybe, maybe we hold on to the lead there in the seventh inning. So it's those little things like that, that add up to allow us to win the game. And, and who knows? I mean, maybe if I put on the hit and run, maybe the guy throws the ball high, high, Trey swings through it. They throw the runner out at second base. Now there's two outs. It takes a hit to score. You don't know how it's going to play out. But in my mind, I'm mad at myself because I should have had the courage to put the play on and take a chance. It would have been a risky play, but sometimes you have to take chances in order to win the game, you know, and it's not, it's not the kid's fault. You know, sometimes they don't drive in the run, but in that particular case, I just felt like it was my fault. I should have taken a chance and, and given ourselves a better chance to win there. So sometimes, sometimes you don't add on that extra run and, and it comes back to haunt you. Anyone else with a question? Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank Coach. Okay, guys. Thank you.